Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our uh, latest vodcast. And this will be on CT of the adrenal gland. And we obviously have uh, done a number of different talks in the adrenal gland. And this one, I'm going to look at a range of pathologies, look at some of the latest thinking, and look at some of the strategies for trying to figure out what specific adrenal masses we are looking at. So the adrenal gland is something we scan in almost every patient. It may not be intentional. We may be simply scanning the chest and we get some of the adrenal or we scan the abdomen and we always get the adrenal. We can do specific adrenal studies, perhaps staging lung cancer to look for metastasis or a patient with hormonal abnormality like Cushing's. We're looking for an adrenal mass. But truthfully, as I said, it's really most commonly as part of a routine exam of the chest or abdomen. Now, when you look at the adrenals, this is a very nice schematic, and it does make the point that the adrenals vary in shape, not only from right to left side, but also individually from patients. They measure less than two or three millimeters in thickness. People talk about how many grams they weigh. Since I can't weigh anything on CT, I'm not worrying about the grams. But you can see very nicely here two different adrenal glands and see them again in the coronal view. Now, what's important also to notice here is the adrenals do enhance. Although we don't think about the normal adrenal enhancing, it in fact does, and probably enhances normally to about 50 or 60 Hounsfield units when you're doing a fast injection. And here's just one more example. Now, when the adrenals enhance very brightly, then we're talking about a patient with shock or hypotension. It was initially described in pediatric patients with trauma, and in fact, this is a peds patient with trauma. You can see the rupture of bowel extending through the abdominal wall, very nicely shown, extremely bright adrenal glands. This means the patient's hypotensive and may be going into shock. Sometimes the clinicians are aware of that. Sometimes the CT findings will predate the clinical suspicion. Another case with adrenal hyperenhancement, patient post-trauma, you can see a lot of fluid in the periportal space. You can see the right pneumothorax. Very nice example of very bright adrenal glands. Now, people have thought a lot about why does the adrenal get so bright? In this article by Chung, we propose that adrenal enhancement may be a sign of hyperperfusion in the early stage of shock due to the crucial role the adrenals play in this critical situation. This may not persist with further circulatory compromise due to vasoconstriction. If confirmed, its recognition has potential value of identifying a therapeutic window before irreversible shock sets in. Other articles, as article by Tarrant in the BJR, made the point that it is likely to be related to a sympathetic response to hypovolemic shock, along with preservation of perfusion to the adrenals as a vital organ. Now, we know that in some cases, like the one I showed you, only the adrenal is super bright. Sometimes the pancreas also will show perfusion changes and be very vascular. Same thing with bowel, and perhaps you might see decreased perfusion in the spleen as well as in the kidneys. And following this article in AJR, it's important to recognize intense adrenal enhancement in normal-shaped adrenals, especially in unwell patients, because this finding may be an early sign of impending shock. So again, sometimes as radiologists, we will know before the clinician knows that the patient is going south, and it's very important when you see those bright adrenals to immediately get on the phone and speak to the clinicians. Now, in looking at the adrenals, let's talk about adrenal masses. I'm going to mention in a moment that most adrenal masses are going to be benign. But when you're looking at an adrenal, clinical history is so important. If you tell me a patient's hypertensive and it has a mass, I'm thinking pheo. Patient has lung cancer and has a mass, I'm thinking metastasis. Patient has no history, it's an incidental finding, I'm thinking about an adenoma. So things we look at, adrenal size, whether something is unilateral or bilateral, what's its attenuation, does it contain fat or calcification, and if there is enhancement, what's the enhancement pattern? We talk about history, the, is a lesion functioning or non-functioning? The fact is that most adrenal lesions we see are not hyperfunctioning, but there are others, Cushing's, Kahn syndrome, or primary aldosteronism, or pheochromocytomas are three good examples of adrenal masses where you do see a hyperfunction. Now, I do want to mention that when we look at CT, sometimes we can be fooled in calling something an unsuspected adrenal mass when it's not. When you look at this set of images, I say, aha, there's a left adrenal lesion, 
but this was the last scan of a chest CT. If I would have had more sections, I would have recognized that that was the fundus of the stomach. Sometimes the fundus of the stomach, sometimes diverticuli off the fundus of the stomach can simulate adrenal lesions. If you have the stomach distended with fluid, that won't be a problem, but it's something to be aware of. Or this case, this patient was referred for left adrenal mass. Now, when you look at the images quickly, it looks like a left adrenal mass. You see the normal right adrenal, but you notice the patient's in arterial phase, and there are some textural changes in the liver. This patient has cirrhosis, and sure enough, when you go from arterial phase to venous phase, you can see that that structure, which was thought to be the adrenal, is simply a large varix. So it's very important to recognize that sometimes varices can simulate adrenal masses. Or splenic artery aneurysms in a tortuous splenic artery. This looks like a calcified splenic lesion. The good thing was if this was a calcified lesion, you would have said it's probably a splenic, you know, it could be splenic artery aneurysm, which it ends up being. But if you were thinking adrenal, you would have said an old hematoma perhaps. Well, that would be a leave alone lesion. This doesn't look to be aggressive. This wouldn't be worked up further. But recognize that splenic artery aneurysms can simulate adenomas, as in this case. Now, sometimes you're going to be wrong, but, you know, it's not an issue. Here's a mass which, to me, looks like an adrenal mass. You give contrast. It's necrotic. It was a younger patient. Looks like a primary neoplasm. Could it be a neuroblastoma? Can it be a primary adrenal carcinoma? Coronal views, it's definitely not going to be the patient's kidney or liver. This was resected. It was a neurogenic extra adrenal sarcoma. Okay, to me, it looks like the adrenal, no problem. Or this case where this was felt to be a large adrenal mass, I guess it's possible it would be one of the largest adrenals I've seen, but this was a mucinous cystic neoplasm of the pancreas with invasive carcinoma. You can see the multiple septations. And again, I guess I could have considered an adrenal mass, though. That would be a big hematoma or old hematoma. What are you thinking about? A cystic pheo, cystic primary adrenal carcinoma. But again, perhaps a large cyst that was complicated. Sometimes with large lesions, it can be difficult, but that's an unusual situation. And in fact, in most cases, these lesions are all cases, those lesions are going to be removed, so it's not going to be much of a problem. Now, when I speak about the adrenal, we always consider the adrenal as an incidental finding many times. And when you think about incidental lomas, the adrenal was the classic incidental loma. And when you define incidental loma, it's a non-functioning adrenal tumor discovered on an imaging study, typically CT, performed for indications exclusive adrenal-related symptoms. And if you look at the population, up to 5% will have incidental adrenal lesions. In select populations, it may be higher, older patients, older women particularly, patients with thyroid disease, patients with diabetes, patients with obesity, are more likely to have incidental adrenal lesions. Now you could say, is it important? Could that adrenal lesion we picked up accidentally be metastasis or a primary tumor? Well, Song wrote an article in 973 patients with an incidental adrenal mass and no history of cancer, no malignancies were identified. Adenomas were the most common lesion, myelipomas number two. And in their series, even if a lesion had an attenuation of over 10, if there was no malignancy, the lesion was still going to be benign. So they made the comment that perhaps we're overusing CT or imaging to follow patients up. If an incidental adrenal mass appears benign in imaging and is under 4CM and the patient has no known malignancy, follow-up imaging appears to have limited value. So that's a good thought, but you know, we do follow these lesions or evaluate them further because it's a tough call to make. This recent article by Ichimutsu made the point that it's very important that if you pick up an adrenal incidentaloma, perhaps it may have clinical significance. You want to look at the lesion carefully, careful review of the lipid content, size, and imaging phenotype is needed to evaluate for risk of malignancy. Identifying a adrenal incidentaloma may be an opportunity to identify an underlying secretory tumor that may have been otherwise unrecognized. Okay, so they're more aggressive. They're saying, well, you pick up an incidental lesion, how do you know it's not a carcinoma? How do you know it's not a pheo? How do you know it's not something important? So again, there is this border of how we evaluate those patients. Well, I think we agree more with this last article that when we see incidental lesions, 
If they're under 4 cm, well defined, no known malignancy, under 10 Hounsville units, it's an adenoma. Very easy. This was written back by Mel Karopkin, and typically the number of under 10 for 4 cm has been a classic part of the CT literature. Some people say under 17. That indeed can be uh, very much a good number as well. When you look at adrenal adenoma, here's a very nice example. Measures zero Hounsfield units, well-defined oval. It's an adenoma. There's no need to do anything else. But this patient did have a contrast study because it was a kidney issue. And look at the lesion. You can see it enhances the 64 Hounsfield units. If you only had the contrast skin, what would you do? You would say, I have a 64 Hounsfield unit lesion. How do I know it's not a med? How do I know it's not a primary? How do I know it's not important? Well, what people have shown is that when you take that lesion and you carry out over time and you simply follow it, the lesions will wash out. Now, all lesions wash out, essentially, but certain wash out at specific rates. And typically, by 15 minutes, a benign lesion in adenoma washes out between 50 and 60 percent or more. Malignancies wash out less than 40 percent. So people have used this as a guide. In fact, the original articles by Solar made the point that when they waited 30 minutes, all adenomas were under 37 and non-adenomas over 41. That's another way of looking at it. But in looking at the washout value, Keoli and the team at Michigan show the very high sensitivity and very high specificity. And the protocol, 96% of the cases were identified. Uh, Coley made the point of the combination of unenhanced and delayed scans. Nearly all adrenal masses can be correctly characterized or adenomas or non-adenomas. And the washout value, typically, you look at the density on non-contrast. You then look at density at 60 seconds and then at 15 minutes. If the lesion from, uh, is under 10 Hounsfield units to begin with, well, it's an adenoma. But at uh, 60 seconds, if you take its number and then you look and see what happens to that number, if it's an adenoma, it'll wash out at 15 minutes by more than 50%. Now, some people have said, well, 15 minutes is a long time. Can I do a 10-minute delay? And I will admit people have written articles about a five-minute delay. Sometimes lesions wash out very quickly, so you're very comfortable. But when you look at accuracy, when you only use 10 minutes, you're not going to be as accurate as 15. Overall test accuracy at 40% threshold was 77%. So it's not going to be as good. You really want to use, and this article goes on by Sagawaya, to say in conclusion a 10-minute delayed adrenal enhancement washout have reduced sensitivity for the detection of adenomas. Okay, 15 minutes it is. So let me share a couple examples. Here's an at lesion, left adrenal adenoma, because it's six Hounsfield units well defined in water density. You do not need to do further studies. If you have that lesion, it's an adenoma. You can stop there. Some people say it needs to be zero, but under 10, everyone would agree now. There's no issue. But that same case went to 67 with arterial phase imaging, 56 venous, and then washed out. So you can see very, very nicely the spectrum, 6 to 67, 56, and 18. You can see if you go from arterial to venous, the washout is minimal, but if you go to delayed, it's washed out far more than 50%, so you're very comfortable with an adenoma. These washout values work in patients with bilateral adrenal adenomas. In this case, this would have been declared benign based simply on the non-contrast scans, minus 6 and 1 respectively with the Hounsfield unit measurements. But when you gave contrast, right adrenal went to 59 and left went to 89. So again, you need to be very careful. If you don't have the, uh, if you only have one phase, and maybe the one phase is arterial, you really could not make the diagnosis of a lipid poor adenoma in those scenarios. Now, if you look at this case, this is a nice example of a lipid poor adenoma because a non contrast is 24. So you can't call it an adenoma. It washes out at 60 seconds or washes up rather to 56 Hounsfield units and then over time backs down to 28. So you can see very nice washout of more than 50%. That's going to be an adenoma. Or this case, 40 Hounsfield units. Maybe it's something else. Well, at one minute it goes to 81, which you can see very nicely here. And then when you follow it out, 81 returns to 48 by 15 minutes. Very nice example of greater than a 50% washout value, classic for an adenoma.
Now, there is one pitfall. When I say washing out 50% gives you an adenoma, when you look at most of the articles that were published initially speaking about adenomas, they always left off pheochromocytomas because they felt anybody could diagnose a pheo. So you need to be very careful. Pheos will wash out more than 50%. But if a lesion enhances above 120, I am not going to call it an adenoma. In our experience, most adenomas are under 100 Hounsfield units at one minute. If things go above 120, to me, it's a feo till proven otherwise. An example, this lesion in the right adrenal, the medial limb, doesn't look very impressive. It measures 50 Hounsfield units. But look what happens with IV contrast. It enhances up to 164 Hounsfield units. I don't care what that lesion does on the washout, that's a pheochromocytoma to me no matter what. And yes, it washed out to 78, it washed out very quickly, but that's going to be a pheochromocytoma. This article by Norcutt and the Hopkins people for indeterminate adrenal masses identified on dual phase CT, higher enhancement during the arterial phase, and arterial images above 110 should make you consider pheochromocytoma. It's interesting that pheo, we think about being brightest in the arterial phase, but sometimes venous phase is brighter, and sometimes they're equally bright. And in this series, the venous phase was actually the best phase for doing it. In this article, uh, several other comments were made. First of all, adenomas are usually more enhancing in the venous than the arterial phase, or have equivalent enhancement across phases. Second, a mass that's greater than 110 Hounsfield units enhancing in arterial phase particularly with higher enhancement in arterial, is most likely a pheo. Okay, very important. Another example, right adrenal has a lesion, 39 Hounsfield units. Okay, well-defined round. Give IV contrast, 121. That's above 110. It's even above 120. What is this? It's vascular. What choices do you have? If you had a renal cell carcinoma, I could consider metastasis but you gotta be thinking about a pheochromocytoma. This was resected, it was an incidental pheochromocytoma. If you measured the washout value, this did wash out 50%, but when you're suspecting a pheo, the washout values do not count. Now, let's move on and let's look at another topic, which is some of the other benign lesions of the adrenal, but we've talked for a while, and why don't we do this? Let's just take a five minute break Everybody get a drink, maybe get a vitamin in the water or something, and then let's come back and start again. Thanks a lot.